Today, you can meet people who have never used the internet or a cell phone. You can even find people who can't read or write. This is rare, but it's true. At the same time, it's difficult to find someone who has never worn Adidas clothing or shoes and, even more so, who has never heard of this brand. No wonder the German brand is now one of the leaders in the sportswear industry. The company is engaged in the production of clothing, shoes, and accessories, not only for sports, but also for everyday life. Currently, Adidas owns such companies as Reebok, Rockport, CCM, and TaylorMade Golf. How did this company emerge? Who invented it? How did it all begin? And how could it become one of the most recognizable brands in the world? But before we begin, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with future content. Adidas was officially founded in 1949, but its story goes back long before that. Adolf Dassler was born into a poor family on November 3, 1900, in a small town in Bavaria. His father was an ordinary shoemaker, and his mother was a laundress in the local laundry. As there were no great opportunities, Adolf assisted his father from a young age and soon became a shoemaker. The family lived in extreme poverty, hardly making ends meet. So, in 1920, the Dassler family decided to set up their own shoemaking business. Adolf Dassler, who was only 20 years old at the time, assumed the company's management and was soon joined by his brother Rudolf. Their friends called them Adi and Rudy. The Dassler Brothers Small Shoe Factory, if it could be called the factory, was engaged in the production of orthopedic shoes for athletes and house slippers and was located in a small laundry room where their mother worked. The business slowly grew. The slippers were in demand, but it was just another small shoemaking shop. At the time, several hundred were in Germany alone. Perhaps some would have been satisfied with what they had, but Adolf was obsessed with the company's development. After many experiments that often failed, he managed to create a breakthrough product in the shoe industry. In 1925, Adolf created the world's first cleats with spiked soles, which a year later became the factory's main product. His partners were ordinary blacksmiths, Zelgin brothers, who made the spikes for the soles in their workshop. The demand for the Dassler brothers' shoes increased daily, resulting in the purchase of their factory building. In 1928, together with Joseph Weitzer, the Dasslers developed and patented a new model of studded shoes that truly made the factory famous. But what's the best way to get your shoes worn? That's right, you just have to present them to the athletes. At the Berlin 1936 Summer Olympics, American runner Jesse Owens won as many as four gold medals and set five world records in Dassler shoes. Owens's shoes first featured the Dassler trademark, two stripes. Following this event, many athletes chose the brand's boots for their Olympic appearances, all thanks to innovative solutions. Who would have thought that all you have to do is bolt spikes to the sole, which will be enough to make you famous worldwide? In the late 1930s, sales of the Dassler Brothers factory exceeded 400,000 German marks, or $100,000. And in 1938, a second Dassler factory opened. In total, their factory produced 1,000 pairs of shoes daily. Sales grew extremely fast until World War II. Even though both Dassler Brothers were staunch members of the Nazi party, the Dassler factories were confiscated by the Nazis, and the brothers were sent to the front. In one of the factories, the Nazis even tried to set up production of handheld anti-tank grenade launchers, but the factory equipment was not adapted to such production. So Adolf returned from the army after a year to produce training shoes for German soldiers. At the end of World War II, the Bavarian town of Herzogenrock, where the brothers' second factory was located, became part of the American occupation zone. The elder Rudolf was accused of being a member of the elite Nazi SS forces and sent to a prisoner of war camp. Adolf was also a member of the Nazi party, but he sewed hockey skates for shipment to the United States as a contribution, which saved his standing in business in general. As compensation for his skates, Dassler receives decommissioned U.S. Army ammunition, tents, old baseball gloves, etc. The family business needed to be rebuilt almost from scratch. In 1946, after the occupation, Rudolf returned to the family business. The brothers started to make shoes again, but given the post-war situation in Germany, the lack of raw materials and problems with the international market and isolation, they made a rather controversial, but at the same time, the only right decision. They proceeded with producing shoes from leftover military uniforms, using absolutely everything they could get their hands on. For example, 
they made soles for shoes from old tires of military vehicles, while 47 hired workers were paid in goods, firewood, yarn, etc. However, the two brothers' different worldviews and visions for the company's further development increasingly led to a quarrel. They could no longer work together as before, prompting them to divide up all their assets. Soon after their father's death, the brothers separated. Rudolph took the new factory and ate off the old one. They agreed never to use the name and symbols of the family business. Adi named his company Adis, while Rudy named his company Ruda. But after a few months, Adis became Adidas, shorthand for Adi Dassler, and Ruda became Puma. So the world-famous brand at the time, Dassler, ceased to exist, and new brands were born, Adidas and Puma, which we all now know. The brothers stayed silent about the reasons for their quarrel for the rest of their lives. But what is most surprising is that after the collapse of the family business, the brothers did not speak to each other for the rest of their lives, and Puma and Adidas became the fiercest competitors. Adolf's company was rapidly gaining popularity. High quality and innovation made Adidas one of the top sports brands. On August 18, 1949, Adolf took two stripes from the Dassler emblem, added a third, and patented it as the Adidas logo. In 1952, the company started to produce other goods under the Adidas brand. The first attempt to diversify the assortment was the production of sports bags. Although shoes remained the main product, Adolf was looking for a partner to manage clothes production. The textile factory owner, Willie Zeltenreich, became his partner, and Adi commissioned a thousand tracksuits with three stripes along the sleeves. The goods sold like hotcakes, and the partners became so fond of each other that soon Zeltenreich was sewing only for Adidas. At the 1954 FIFA World Cup in Bern, the German soccer team in Adidas shoes won the world championship for the first time, thanks to another Adidas innovation, the removable cleats. Soon after this victory, sales of Adidas boots rose from 800 pairs to 2,000 pairs a day. In 1956, Adidas even received official approval for its advertising at the Olympic Games in Melbourne. In the same year, Adidas signed its first licensing agreement with the Norwegian factory in Jovik, followed soon by Adidas's production in France. In the late 1950s, Adidas entered the U.S. market, capitalizing on the growing popularity of sports and the lack of strong competitors at the time. By the end of the 1970s, the company owned 24 factories in 17 countries and sold about 200,000 pairs of shoes daily, clothing, swords, and bags. In 1970, the Adidas Telstar ball became the official ball of the FIFA World Cup held in Mexico. In 1972, Adidas became the title sponsor of the Olympic Games in Munich, and the German national team won the European Football Championship. This is the year when the famous trefoil of the company appeared. The three leaves signify the company's presence on three world continents. In 1974, German footballers wearing Adidas boots became world champions for the second time. At the 1976 Olympic Games, athletes outfitted in Adidas won 75 gold, 86 silver, and 88 bronze medals. By the way, this record has not been broken until now. On September 6, 1978, at the age of 77, Adolf left this world. The management of the company was taken over by his widow, Katharina. The founder's death marked the beginning of the company's most severe crisis, caused primarily by the emergence of serious competitors. Nike and Reebok in the 1980s launched aggressive advertising campaigns in North America, and by the end of the decade, they accounted for 50% of the athletic footwear market in the United States, while the share of Adidas had fallen to a critical 3%. Adolf Dassler's heirs did not last long heading the company. Katarina died in 1984, and Horst Dassler, son of Adolf and Katharina, died in 1987. The remaining heirs sold the scarcely running company in 1989 for only 440 million DM to French entrepreneur Bernard Tappy, then owner of the French soccer club Olympique de Marseille, retaining only 20% of the company's shares. At that time, Adidas was close to disaster. The interest in the brand was rapidly fading, and the superiority among sports companies was already divided between Nike and Reebok. However, the new owner failed to improve the company's situation. In 1993, he sold Adidas, and a few years later, he was declared bankrupt. The new buyer of the company was a group of French investors who appointed Robert Louis Dreyfus as head of Adidas. His leadership initiated a reorganization of the company. The marketing budget was significantly increased and production shifted to Indonesia, China, and Thailand. 
Savings on cheap labor costs in the third world countries made the products competitive in the world market again. And in 1995, profits had already more than doubled compared to 1994. In 1997, Adidas purchased Salomon Sports, a leading French manufacturer of winter sports goods. Until 2005, the concern was called Adidas Salomon. This step would allow the company to become the world's second largest manufacturer of sporting goods after Nike, increasing sales by one and a half times, especially in the U.S. In 1999, to mark the company's 50th anniversary, the construction of new headquarters began and representative offices were opened in Japan, Turkey, and the Netherlands. In 2001, the formation of its own retail chain, the first two Adidas original stores were opened in Berlin and Tokyo in 2001, followed by the opening of a new store in New York in 2002. The company gained momentum again, getting more and more popular every year. In 2005, Adidas sold the Solomon Sports Company, and with these proceeds in August 2005, Adidas bought 100% of the shares of its competitor, Reebok International Limited, for $3.8 billion. This takeover allowed Adidas to increase its share of the most important American market for sporting goods to 20% and get as close as possible to the market leader Nike, which controls 35%. As of today, Adidas has outsourced most of its production. In total, Adidas works with more than 500 independent factories from all over the world, manufacturing products in 46 countries. Most of the production takes place in Asia. In 2021 alone, the company produced 340 million pairs of Adidas shoes. Products are sold under two main brand names, Adidas and Reebok. At the end of 2022, the company employed 60,000 people, had a turnover of $21 billion in 2021, and a net profit of $2.5 billion. Adidas is the biggest sponsor of sports teams and the most famous athletes worldwide. Several times the much-loved brand could simply disappear, go bankrupt, and become a thing of the past. Adolf Dassler always considered commercial success his second priority. The first place was his irrepressible love for sports since he was a very active man. At the age of 75, he was still playing tennis and swimming in the pool. One of his hobbies was designing shoes, and he personally made many inventions, in particular soccer boots with interchangeable cleats. He was involved in the business affairs of the company until his death. The road to success was thorny and long, but Adolf Dassler, an ordinary provincial cobbler boy, was the one who gave life to this global giant. What is your favorite sportswear brand and why? We're curious to hear your opinion in the comments. At this point, we get to the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and give this video a big thumbs up.